Hi, I'm Patty Moreno, the Garden Girl. Welcome to the wonderful world of kitchen gardening. In this series, I'm going to show you how to garden by cuisine. It's a new way of companion planting all of the herbs and vegetables in a 4x8 raised bed or containers. And we're going to do it without pesticides. I'm an organic gardener, so I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on sustainable ways of growing these vegetables right in your own backyard. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to plant, maintain, grow, harvest, and also cook Italian vegetables and make traditional marinara sauce. If I can garden by cuisine, you can too. I'm here in front of this raised bed that I'm gonna plant an amazing assortment of Italian heirloom varieties. You know, tomatoes have a very interesting history. A lot of people think they're from Italy because the Italians adopted tomatoes and cultivated them, but it's really from South America. When you're planting tomatoes, you wanna make sure that you plant them all the way up to the leaves. What that's gonna do is it's gonna strengthen the roots of the tomato plant because it's gonna have a lot of tomatoes hanging that will be heavy. Now, if planted correctly, and if you have a successful harvest, you can grow up to 30 pounds of tomatoes per plant. It's an amazing amount and it's perfect for tomato sauce that's gonna last you a really long time. We are going to plant some oregano with our tomatoes for our homemade tomato sauce. Oregano is really important to give the tomato sauce that extra kick, especially the little aftertaste that it gives you. Now, oregano is a perennial, which means it's gonna come back year after year, and it's pretty cold hardy, so those of you in the Northeast or in colder climates can actually keep it in the ground and it'll come back the next year. Oregano can be invasive, Proper pruning is essential so that it doesn't take over your raised bed. Oh, it smells so good. So the next thing we're gonna plant is basil. Basil, of course, goes really well with tomato sauce. You can see here there are little black seeds. This particular type of basil is called Genovese basil, and it's gonna go really well with our tomato sauce. And also, if we plant enough, we're gonna have some extra and we're gonna make pesto sauce with it. So the last thing we're gonna start from seed in this bed are onions. Onions, of course, are essential in amazing tomato sauce. And I've got a Mediterranean variety called Tropeana Lunga. And the reason why we're planting this particular variety, besides being an heirloom variety and amazingly delicious, they actually ripen in mid-summer. So just in time for our tomatoes to start being ripe, for our basil to be ready, we're gonna be able to harvest the onion too and be able to make amazing tomato sauce. These hoop houses create a warm microclimate around my plants to protect against cool spring temperatures. Once the average nighttime temperatures are above 60 degrees, take the plastic off. through here and I'm weeding and I'm mulching. You know, weeding is very important that you do it on a regular basis because you want to make sure that the plants you want growing here actually thrive. Mulching is also important because you want to keep the water in and those weeds down. I use cocoa mulch, which has an amazing chocolatey aroma. It's also a great soil conditioner and it's a renewable resource. <laughs> All of these tomato plants are gonna make so many tomatoes that I'm gonna have quarts and quarts of tomato sauce. It's just gonna remind us of summer.
one of the first things ready to harvest is basil. And I'm gonna show you how to make pesto sauce fresh from the garden. We're here in my kitchen and I've got all of my ingredients ready to make some amazing pesto sauce. First thing, of course, we need is garlic. You want to use at least one whole clove. Pop it in. You also want some pine nuts, and I'm going to use about half a cup of pine nuts. Now for the basil. I'm going to start off with about a handful of lemon basil. I so wish you could smell my kitchen right now. It smells amazing with all these great fresh ingredients. Delicious. I'm gonna take a handful of the Genovese basil that I have here. All right, that's enough basil for now. I am gonna add about a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Oh my goodness, so good. Next, we're going to start putting in the olive oil. And you're gonna wanna use about a cup, but this is kind of where your eye needs to take over and you just want it to be a really creamy consistency where it falls off the spoon, but it's not too watery and not too pasty. Check this out, look at that. See, it just falls off the spoon. I need some salt and pepper. All right, I am done. I'm just gonna check it one last time. Make sure there's enough salt and pepper in here. Mmm. garden where I've also planted an Italian kitchen garden for making amazing tomato sauce, but I've done it in a 4x4 four four raised bed. So I've scaled down the number of plants. It's a great alternative to either the container version or the 4x8 raised bed. As you can see, there's tons of basil coming through, and my tomatoes even have some ripe tomatoes ready to be harvested. It's really easy to prune your tomatoes. It's also really important. You want to take away those leaves and those branches because that plant is putting the energy into making those branches, but we want that energy to go into making flowers and also into our amazing tomatoes. I'm gonna show you how to prune your tomato plants. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna locate the first set of flowers, and then you're gonna wanna prune all of the branches below that. So I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna start at the bottom, actually. And you see these little guys? These little guys really aren't doing anything. They're really easy to just take off with your fingers and you just wanna pop them off. You wanna make sure that you're not damaging the stem also. See this little guy right here? That's a sucker and a sucker is another branch that grows in between a branch and the stem. So you wanna just pop those off and you wanna do that consistently throughout the growing season. See how easy that was? That is the beginning of a little sucker right there. I'm just gonna take him off. I'm gonna take this whole branch off too, anyway. So I'm just going to continue going up the plant and popping off the branches. As you can see, it's really easy. You can just do it with your fingers. You don't need any pruning shears or anything, so no special equipment required. I'm gonna leave this guy on because it is growing some tomatoes already. But I'm gonna pop these guys that are coming off. They're suckers also. And as I do this, I like training the tomato plant into the vertical support. And if you're using tomato stakes to support your tomatoes, you want to tie them up even more securely as you're pruning. Do you see this pile I have right here? I'm not going to let this pile go to waste. Normally, I would just take this into the compost bin, but I'm going to propagate these tomato plants. What is propagating? Well, propagating is basically just making more tomato plants using the branches of these tomatoes. 
you want to pop off all of the branches on the bottom of your almost new tomato plant here. I want it to be about four inches long, not any bigger than that, and I want to leave some of the leaves on there. Then I'm going to take the branch and I'm going to propagate it by placing it right next to these other tomato plants right in the soil. Just like we planted the tomato plants, we want to mound the soil around all the way up to the leaves. Over time, this is going to form into another tomato plant. Now these propagated tomato plants are gonna grow and they're gonna also give me flowers and then tomatoes. And then I'm gonna have a staggered harvest. So once these are done, I'll have another plant right here ready to be harvested. You wanna make sure you water these propagated tomato plants and keep them moist so they can take root. Coming up next, I'm gonna show you how to plant a container version of my Italian kitchen garden. In this galvanized bin, we are gonna plant tomatoes. Check this plant out. I'm also planting these marigolds. Marigolds have a natural insect repellent in them that keeps away aphids and a bunch of other insects. And we don't want that to happen. We wanna have a good harvest, so we wanna make sure that those nasty bugs don't go anywhere near our tomato plants. You can also plant basil. It will help ward off pests that can damage your tomato plants. I'm gonna show you how to make a quick and easy, inexpensive trellis for your tomato plants and other vining crops. All of the materials that you need to make your trellis are readily available at your local home improvement center. I'm gonna be using some galvanized metal electrical conduit. It's half inch in diameter and all of the pieces are already cut to size. I've got two five foot pieces. I've got a piece for the top, and that's about three feet long. Then I've got these great corner pieces, and they come just like this. Then I've got four couplings, and we're gonna use this to attach and make our frame. Great thing about this is all you need is a screwdriver. Our frame is complete, and now it's time to put on the nylon mesh. We're gonna attach it with zip ties. Well, it's done, and all I have to do now is trim off any of the excess nylon and then put it in my raised bed wherever my plants need support. I'm gonna show you how to make a basil gimlet. So I need about five leaves of basil. You can use any type of basil. And we're going to just break them apart and put them at the bottom of our shaker here. We think of basil, we think of pesto sauce, tomato sauce, cocktails. Now we can think of cocktails. We're gonna fill this up about three quarters of the way with ice. Now I am going to add my simple syrup, the juice of one whole lime. I'm gonna pour that into our shaker here. Mm. Now, I'm gonna use some vodka. You can also use gin if you want. And I'm putting about two ounces of vodka in here. And fill it up. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take one little leaf here and cut it up with my fingers as a garnish. Mm. A fresh cocktail using herbs from my garden. at all of these fresh ingredients from my garden. I've got the basil and the parsley and the oregano. I also have some lemon basil. I've got some onions that I had picked earlier and chopped up. I've got some garlic and my fresh green peppers. And of course, a wide variety of heirloom tomatoes. Tomatoes. Remember I told you that 
there is no shortage of help when I am about to make tomato sauce. So why don't you pass me a tomato? Big mama. Yeah, this is a huge heirloom tomato. Now I'm using this pureeer here to basically separate the skin and the seeds from the awesome tomato flavor in here. We are also going to make so much tomato sauce. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna can it because we wanna save it for use later on this fall or winter. I think this thing's about to be full. Yeah, this thing's full. I've got here a bowl underneath this end, which is where all of the skin and the seeds are gonna come out. <gasps> oh, look, it's coming out! Good, keep doing that. Then I've got a bowl under here where all of the juice is gonna come out, the puree is gonna come out, and that's what we're gonna use in our sauce. Now that tastes good. I definitely think we need more tomato sauce because what we wanna do is when we're cooking it up, we're going to reduce the tomato puree to half its consistency. So, we're gonna need to do a lot more tomatoes. Guess what's next? Uh, flavor. Yeah, flavor. Got tons of garlic here, so why don't you pop it in? Now, all of the onion, a handful of oregano. Yep, that's perfect. These are the peppers. What I'm doing is I'm basically just taking the seeds out. <laughs> go ahead. There you go. Nice. Yep, we're gonna add some lemon basil. That's lemon basil spread and perfect. That's perfect. That smells so good. That's exactly oh. what we want. So basically, the ingredients are lemon basil, oregano, garlic, and pepper. Oh, don't forget the onion. We're gonna take the olive oil here and we're gonna pour it into this pot. All right, so I've got a bunch of garlic that I'm just chopping up, not finely, pretty coarsely. All right, here. Take this and mix that up. bunch of coarse garlic in here and now I would like you to little by little put some in. Yeah. Whoa! Keep doing that. Don't mix it. I'll do the mixing. Now I'm gonna grab this. Oh that looks amazing. I'm gonna cover it and we're just gonna let it bubble and cook down. Can you hear that? The tomato sauce is just boiling. Mm. It's reduced down to about halfway and it's really thick. Woo! Now it's ready to get put into the jars. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna grab some herbs and I'm gonna chop them up. Every little last bit. I'm just gonna stir it all up. I am now ready to put these in the jar. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, look at that. One thing about making your own tomato sauce is that it tends to be a little bit sweeter. A lot of tomato sauce recipes out there call for adding sugar. I haven't added any sugar. So there's one down. Ooh, it's super hot. I think I've got enough here for one more big jar. I'm gonna turn this down. I'm getting to the last little bit and I don't want it to burn. Throughout the cooking process, I came along and checked my sauce, gave it a good stir, and also skimmed off any of the stuff that was on top about every 20 minutes or so. The final step is to take my jars and put them into my pressure cooker. You want to make sure that there's about an inch and a half of boiling water on the bottom. You don't want to cover these entirely. So I've got 
my tomato jars in here and now I am gonna pop on the lid. We want to make sure that this lid fits on perfectly around the whole thing. Now I just have to put on my pressure conch here and it's going to be at 10 pounds. All right, I've got my jars in here. I can hear the water boiling. And I'm going to leave it here for about 20 or 30 minutes. Can you believe this is my last jar of tomato sauce? My family and I ate it all up and I can't wait to make some more. Coming up next week, I'm gonna teach you how to plant an Asian kitchen garden and then make stir fry fresh from the garden. I'm Patty Moreno, the garden girl. Thanks for watching.